Hi, I'm Rebecca from Ingvid. In this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about place and time correctly in an English sentence. Now, this is important because in every language, the order of words in a sentence varies. It's different. And in English, we have certain patterns that we follow. Now, I'm not talking about English poetry or fancy English prose. I'm talking about regular English sentences, conversational English, business English, and so on. Okay? So, what's the basic order that we follow? You probably know that already, but let's do a quick review of that. And then let's look at what to do when you need to mention information related to place and time. All right? Let's get started. So, in our basic English sentence, um, we follow this order. Subject, verb, and object. Okay? What does all that mean? I'm going to just review it quickly for you. So, the subject is the doer of the action. Who is doing the action? The verb tells us what that action is. And the object is what receives the action. Okay? Or what uh, the verb is doing the action to or for or something like that. Okay? So, let's look at the example sentence. You speak English very well. That's the correct word order because in English, we expect to hear first a mention of the subject, then of the verb, and then of the object. And then, after that, any other information. So, the mistake that students sometimes make is to say something like, you speak very well English. That's not correct. Because you speak, speak what? English. And then any other details like very well. So, this is the basic rule, okay? There's a lot of details that we can go into about subject verb order. You need to know it. And if you don't know this basic subject verb order really, really well in your sleep, then please watch our Ingvid lesson on basic word order in English, okay? All right. Now, let's look at another example of that basic order. He borrowed a hundred dollars from me. He is the subject. Borrowed is the verb. Borrowed what? A hundred dollars. And then any other information from me. So, we do not say he borrowed from me a hundred dollars. We need to say, he borrowed a hundred dollars from me. Okay? Again, that's the review of a basic subject verb order that English sentences follow. But what happens when we have other information in that we need to communicate that's related to place and time? What do we say first? Is there a pattern? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. Because English speakers expect to hear things in a certain order. Now, if you stop an English uh, speaker on the street and ask him, in a sentence, do I say place first or do I say time first? They're going to look at you like, I don't know. I just say what I say. So, they don't know that, okay? When you speak a language, of course, you're not always familiar with all the grammatical rules that you're following and the same in your language, right? But as a grammar teacher and as an English teacher, I'm telling you, there is an actual order that we follow normally. So, this is what it is. And by learning it, you can sound more natural yourself. Okay. So, the rule is this, that if you need to mention information about place, first mention that, and then afterwards mention time. So, place first, then time. Got it? Let's look at some examples. They go to the market every day. Okay? So, what happened here? Where's the place? The market. They go to the market. And where's the time? Every day. Not they go every day to the market. They go where? To the market. When? Every day. Okay? Where and when. Next, we're leaving for Italy in May. Okay? Leaving where for where? For Italy. When? In May. All right? Where and when. Place and time. Okay, just say that. Place and time. Where and when. Next, I forgot my cell phone at the bank yesterday. I forgot my cell phone where? At the bank. When? 
yesterday. Okay? That's really it. And even though it seems really simple, it can get a little bit confusing. So let's do a quiz to find out that you have actually understood this simple but important rule very well. So now let's look at these eight sentences. Some of these are correct and some are incorrect based on what we have just learned about place and time. All right, so let's get started. Number one, we left at seven o'clock for the airport. We left at seven for the airport. Is that right or wrong? What's the rule that we said? It's a usage rule, okay? Sometimes English speakers might play around with it, but for you, follow this rule and it'll help you to always be right. So, what's the principle? Place and then time. So in number one, we left where? For the airport. When? At seven. So this one was wrong the way it was, okay? The first one was wrong. Sorry about that. Okay, so it should be we left for the airport at seven. Number two, I walk to the store every day. I walk to the store every day. Is that correct? Well, I walk where? To the store when? Every day. So this one is absolutely fine. Okay. Number three. He was born in 1975 in London. He was born in 1975 in London. Is that right or wrong? Let's check. He was born where? Oops. We have when first. So that's not right. Okay. So we should say he was born in London in 1975, right? He was born where? In London, when? In 1975. Getting it? Where, when, place, time, okay? That's the rule we're following. Number four, Peter didn't go yesterday to the office. Peter didn't go yesterday to the office. Is it right or wrong? What do you say? It is, yes, it's wrong, okay? Because Peter didn't go, it should be, Peter didn't go where? To the office, when? Yesterday. Okay, are you getting it? Are you starting to see the rhythm of it? Number five, we've lived for 10 years in this building. We've lived for 10 years in this building. Is that correct or incorrect? Think about it. It is actually incorrect because we should say we've lived where? In this building. Time, we're talking about time, when? For 10 years, okay? Number six, she dropped the kids to school early. She dropped the kids to school early. So, she dropped the kids, where? To school, when? Early. So that one was correct, okay? That one's right. Number seven. I'm joining in the fall university. I'm joining in the fall university. Is it right or wrong? Doesn't sound right, does it? No, it's wrong. So I'm joining where? Which place? University. When? In the fall. Okay, good. And the last one. We saw him at the mall last night. We saw him at the mall last night. Is that right or wrong? That is actually right. Because where? We saw him where? At the mall. And when? Last night. Okay? All right. So I hope that 
by doing these exercises, by listening to the explanation of the guidelines, that you have kind of uh, understood and absorbed this principle of place before time when we are constructing an English sentence. Try to uh, remember that when you create your sentences. Try to write just now uh, some sentences. That's the best way to do it. Not just theoretically, but also practically in your own life. Talk about some things happening around you. Talk about some, write some sentences about what you did, what members of your family did. And use place and time in the, in your own examples. That's the best way for you to remember these rules. Okay. Now, here are some other things you can do to really master this very important area. Okay. So number one, go to our website, www.ingvid.com. There you can do a quiz on this and practice a little bit more. You can also watch uh, the other lesson that I've mentioned, and there may be other lessons that have to do with word order, which will help you to really master even the basic word order, subject, verb, object, in case that's something you're not sure about. You want to really master that. Plus, you will also find on our website a free resource, which you can download a page with information about this. It summarizes this subject. So please download that. I wrote that for you. And of course, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can continue to get lots of useful lessons, which I hope will shorten your learning path in English. Okay? Bye for now. All the best with your English.